Hello everyone. Welcome to Living Coast in your living room. My name is Ashley, one of the educators here at the Living Coast Discovery Center. During this time, we are closed to the public. However, we are doing our best to bring to you all kinds of different educational videos to learn about the wonderful animals that call the Living Coast home. We are doing so by sharing these videos here on our YouTube playlist for you to get a chance to learn about nature. We will be posting these videos Monday to Friday at 11 a.m. So be sure to check every single day, Monday to Friday, to see what new things we're sharing with all of you so you can learn all about nature and the wonderful things within it. Now, the Living Coast Discovery Center is a small nonprofit zoo and aquarium located down in Chula Vista on the San Diego Bay National Wildlife Refuge. Now, we are closed during this time, so we would love for you guys to come visit us, but we know that's not possible right now, but hopefully soon we'll be able to continue to open up our doors so that you guys can get a chance to check out some of these wonderful exhibits that I've been filming in front of for all of our series. Now, today we are inside of our Shark and Ray exhibit, which gives you a nice, lovely opportunity to see some of the different oceanic animals that live off of our coastline. So behind me, we have all kinds of different native species that live here in San Diego. We have our leopard sharks, we have some horn sharks, some shovel-nosed guitar fish, and many different species of fish. So be sure to keep your eyes out on the background to check out all the different native species that are here at the Living Coast. Now today, we are going to be focusing in on ocean zones. Do you know how many zones there are in the ocean? Do you know what animals live in which zones of the ocean? Well, today we're gonna to go all over all of that as well as create our very own ocean zone jar. The ocean is divided into three main zones. And these three zones are going to be broken up based off of depth and light level. Depth and light level play a huge important part into the ocean and what's able to survive within it. So that is why those zones are going to be made based off of those two important characteristics. Now these three main zones are going to be what NOAA, the National Oceanic Atmospheric Administration uses, but they can also be broken down even further. So there are three main groups, but you can actually break apart those three groups to make up to five different zones of the ocean. But to keep it simple and make it easier for us to understand today, we're going to focus with those three main zones. Now the first zone is going to be the very top level of the ocean. Very right up on the top level is the part we like to go swimming in, snorkeling in, surfing, all that stuff. And that is actually going to be the sunlight zone. The sunlight zone is going to be characterized by the ability of light to be able to penetrate it or be absorbed into it. So the sunlight zone has a lot of light going through. It's also known as the euphotic zone. The euphotic zone or the sunlight zone it's going to be the first 200 meters of the ocean, or 656 feet. Now this first 200 meters of the ocean is going to be able to absorb that sunlight and allow animals to be able to see within it. Now having the sunlight entering into this water also allows things like plants to be able to survive. Things like algae and plankton are able to grow inside of the sunlight zone. So they can go through that process of photosynthesis by being able to absorb sunlight. And this is actually extremely important because plankton is going to be the start of the marine food chain. So if we were not able to have sunlight penetrating the ocean, we wouldn't be able to have photosynthesis occurring. And therefore, we would not have really anything that's able to survive out there in the ocean. Now, another term used to refer to this zone is actually called the epipelagic zone. So epi meaning like the top, and pelagic means ocean. So it basically just means that top ocean layer. So the first 200 meters is known as the sunlight zone. That one's pretty easy to remember because this is where we like to go swimming and it's usually warmest. Now, the next zone is going to be between 200 meters and about 1,000 meters. So anything within that 200 to 1,000. So we have zero to 200 up here, 200 to 1,000 meters down here. And this is equivalent to about 656 feet to 3,280 feet. So that's a pretty far down depth. This zone is commonly known as the twilight zone, but it's also called the dysphotic zone. So the twilight zone or the dysphotic zone 
is going to not really have a lot of light. There could be a little bit of light right at that 200 meter mark, right around that first couple of sections. It's gonna be a little bit of light able to penetrate in there, but there's not gonna be much light happening. So most of the twilight zone is pretty dark. Now, because of this, it's not going to have any type of photosynthesis occurring because there's not enough light for that to happen. So there's no photosynthesis in that despotic or twilight zone. And it is going to still have some animals that are able to live in it. Do you know of any animals that might be able to survive in the twilight zone? So some animals that might be able to survive there are going to be things like fish, squid, octopus, or hatchet fish. Those are all some animals that are adapted to life in the twilight zone. Now they do have to have special adaptations to be able to survive there, such as being able to absorb as much light as possible with their eyes so they can see the best way as possible. Now another adaptation that is commonly seen in the twilight zone, it can, can be the ability for bioluminescence. So when animals are able to produce their own light, that is called bioluminescence. And this can actually help them to either attract prey so that they can get more food, or even sometimes scare away predators. Bioluminescence is actually very multifaceted. It's very functional for many different animals because it also can aid in camouflage. Now in the twilight zone, it is pretty dark, but there's also tons of pressure. There's a lot of water pressure pushing down on this zone. So animals that live in this zone can often have some really funky body shapes and may not be as big or the right shape that we would traditionally think of for a fish. Now I did say this zone was the twilight zone or the dysphotic zone, but it actually has another name known as the mesopelagic zone. So there's a lot of different names that can be used for those different zones. So, so far we've covered the first 200 meters, which is going to be that sunlight zone. The next zone is 200 meters to about 1000 meters, which is going to be the twilight zone. And next, we're going to move into the darkest zone in the ocean, known as the midnight zone. So that third zone is the midnight zone, or the aphotic zone. It's called the aphotic zone because there is absolutely no light whatsoever, complete darkness down in the midnight zone. The midnight zone is going to occur anywhere from that 1,000 meter mark and farther down. So anywhere from about that 3,280 feet to forever, basically. The deepest, darkest parts of the ocean are all gonna fall within this. Sometimes this zone is also known as the abyss. Now, different trenches are gonna occur in this zone as well as they're down at the bottom of the ocean floor. And those are gonna be the ones that can continue down pretty far. So that darker third zone is going to be that aphotic zone. And that is going to occur from, like we said, from that 1000 meter mark and below. Um, and that's where we have those large trenches. Now, a large portion of the ocean does occur within this zone, and there's a lot of stuff down there that scientists have not been able to discover and really learn that much about. So we're still learning all kinds of different things about the oceans as scientists are developing new technologies and getting new research so that they can help and learn more about these different animals. Now, again, just like in the zone above it, there's a lot of water pressure acting on this zone as well. So animals that live down here in this zone can often be some really crazy looking animals. What kind of animals do you think might live in the midnight zone? So in the midnight zone, there are going to be things like anglerfish, gulper eels, lots of different types of bacteria that can survive around those thermal vents and in trenches and things like that. And even vampire squid. So there can be quite a bit of different life that lives down here. A lot of different styles, but there's still not that much life that occurs in the bottom of the ocean in that last zone. So that third zone does not have a lot of life in it, but it can support life. Animals that live in this zone do need to be very specially adapted to deal with the super cold water temperatures and those high intense pressures from the water, as well as the ability to have complete darkness. There is no light whatsoever down there. It is complete, completely pitch black down there. Now, a lot of animals that do live in the midnight zone have some adaptations that help them, such as having really slow metabolisms. Do you think there's a lot of food down in the midnight zone? All the way down to the bottom of the ocean? No, there's not. So animals that live down there, they either need to be predators, so they're gonna have to actively hunt, 
and be able to lure their prey or be able to see their prey in different ways, or they need to actually be scavengers. Sca there are a lot of scavengers that live down in the midnight zone, and they actually wait for things like what's called a whale fall. When an animal from the top zones has actually passed away and it's starting to break down and it sinks down to the bottom of the ocean. Now that whale fall can bring all kinds of nutrients to the bottom of the ocean floor. And there are many animals that thrive off of this. Now this also means that they need to eat very little and not very often. So having slow metabolisms is gonna help them to be able to do so. Another common adaptation that occurs with these animals is having very slow growing bodies or slow growing muscles. So they're not gonna rapidly get really big. They're gonna take their time to slowly grow and grow and grow. So now that we've gone over those three different layers, we talked about the sunlight zone at the top, the twilight zone in the middle, and the midnight zone at the bottom, we're gonna be able to make our very own ocean zones in a jar. So I'm gonna show you mine, so you can get a chance to check it out. Now you gotta look very closely to be able to see those different colorations, but you can see here that I do have my three different zones. So I have my sunlight zone right here, my twilight zone right here, and then my midnight zone down here. Now, mine are not actually even and perfect to be the correct sizing of how it would really look out in the ocean, but that's okay. So for you to make your own ocean zones, you're gonna need a few things. So you're gonna need a jar, a clear jar is going to work best, and then you're going to need some corn syrup, just soap and water. So the best way to do this is going to take a half a cup measuring cup and you're going to need three different bowls. So in one bowl, you're gonna put a half a cup of your corn syrup. Another bowl is gonna be a half a cup of dish soap and the other bowl will be a half a cup of water. Now, depending on how big your jar is, you can use more or less, but half a cup is usually enough for a small jar like this. And then in each zone, you're gonna put different food coloring in them to make them. So in the corn syrup, that's gonna be your darkest zone. You're going to use all three of the food coloring pieces. So you're gonna put a drop of green, a drop of blue, and a drop of red. So you are gonna put a mixture of all of these colors in there to make sure it gets to that nice dark purple coloration. With the dish soap, mine happened to be blue, so I only put in one more drop of blue food coloring as well as one drop of green. And this mixture gave it this nice greenish hue. Now, if your food dish soap is not blue, that's okay. Just mix some blue and green together until you get a nice lighter coloration, but still mixing it so you can see that blue and the green together. Now, in your bowl with water, you're just gonna put one single drop of blue food coloring. That's all you need to put in there. Then you're going to slowly add it to the jar. You start with your corn syrup down at the bottom, getting your corn syrup in there. So that way you can See that nice and dark coloration in there? You're gonna put the corn syrup down at the bottom, followed by the dish soap. But when you enter the dish soap in there, you have to tilt your jar like this and use a funnel. Make sure it hits the side of the jar first before it comes down to the bottom. Then you're gonna do the same thing to add the water level. The water needs to also be added sideways like this and slowly so that way the water doesn't break the dish soap level and the dish soap level doesn't break that corn syrup. Once those layers mix, then you won't actually be able to see your different ocean zones. So you wanna try your best to keep them separated as best as possible. Once you're done, you can label them as the sunlight zone, the twilight zone, and the midnight zone. Now I hope you've had a great time learning about oceans here on Living Coast in Your Living Room. And you'll join us next time for any of our great videos here on YouTube. See you next time.